start by telling us about this, the, these questions you had about where your family came from. Absolutely. Um, my family moved to Canada from England in uh, 1972, and for an a um, few years in my childhood. I grew up in uh, St. Catharines, Ontario, and um, because we seemed to be such an unusual mix, my family, in the particular neighborhood where we lived, um, I had a Jewish last name, I went to the Catholic school. Um, as my niece said, I wasn't all the way white. And, um, <laughs> uh, and, and my parents and my siblings and, and me too, we all had these English accents, and so I heard a lot where are you from? What are you? And I would go home and I would ask my parents the same question, what are we? And the answer was always quite long, a mix somehow of English, Irish, Portuguese, Dutch, possibly Russian. Uh, and then when I was about 10 years old, went back and met my father's father for the first time and realized that he looked uh, to me to be Chinese, which was a gobsmacker for me because it had never come up before. So I wondered, how did we get a name like Abraham? How was it that um, my grandfather looked Chinese? And my father at that time, my parents told me the story of all that was known about him at that time, which was his name was John Abraham. Somebody in South India had given him that name. He was a juggler and he had disappeared. So when you're about that age, 10 or 11, and you find out you might have a juggling great-grandfather, it kind of marinates in your imagination a little bit. Similarly, on my mother's side, she also had this mysterious captain, sea captain grandfather, who had ties, apparently, to a wealthy plantation in Jamaica and never knew if any of this was actually true. So years later, uh, as a science writer working at the Globe and Mail, when I realized it had not only become possible but affordable to um, look into your ancestry with DNA, I decided to do it. <laughs> Explain a little bit about um, genetic sort of family research or genealogy using DNA. So by looking at your DNA and seeing where, um, what markers you have, researchers can associate those markers with certain places in the world and therefore know something about the people you inherited them from. So you decide that you're going to try to address some of these mysteries within your own family. You need your parents, your siblings. And so what was their reaction? My father was on side from the get-go. He um, really loved the idea that science was going to um, you know, provide something that was concrete and not just family stories or folklore. My mother was really not that keen. <laughs> she wasn't sure that she wanted to hear what DNA would have to say about her ancestry. If you're looking at this to explain your sense of identity, I think that the cultural bonds and the stories we tell ourselves and about each other are much more powerful um, you know, than anything you can learn in a swab. Genetic identity is as powerful as we allow it to be. Right. Um, what started this journey for me at this time was I had my own first child. And I, Growing up with so many questions about what was true, what was not true, were we this, were we that, I wanted to be able to say, you know, when she asks me, yeah, this is, you know, this is, this is what our story is. Now today you can do these mail order tests and you can do all of this without ever leaving your, 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 off, your home office, your computer, and find out about your connections and people connect all the time. But what it makes me realize is on a genetic level how small the world really is. The flip side to it is the disappointment that can occur when people find out their genetic background. So, um, for instance, your husband, family lore had long been that your husband had, I believe, it, a Cherokee ancestor, and he'd, he'd been very um, enamored with this idea. Right. And I remember, at first, you know, I was teasing him, you know, pale face, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> and uh, we were having a big joke about it. And then I realized, you know, wait a minute, actually, this was something, you know, he'd heard family lore about, and it had meaning for him. And here was this genetic test that suddenly says, no, we don't find anything like that. This was a test of only 176 markers in a code of, you know, 3 billion counts chemical pairs, so very, very low power. And just a few years later, I was able to do a test with 10,000 markers. Um, so at that time, we were having this whole conversation about entirely, it's entirely possible that it's there, but you just don't see it. And, and then comes the point, well, if it's not there, 
doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But when you open that Pandora's box, you're absolutely right. All of this stuff right. comes tumbling out. Having done this and having had this experience personally, um, is the question of, of you know, blood ties, biological ties, DNA, has it become more important or less important to you? I think that you know, DNA is this fascinating portal, uh, yes, to the future and, and to the present in certain terms of your health risks and your medical risks, but it's also an incredible portal to the past. And I think people think they know what their ancestry is, but I think there's probably a captain and a juggler kicking around <laughs> in everybody's past to some degree. <laughs>